congregation will please stand. Many ages from the time of God created the heavens and the earth, and then formed man and woman in his own image. Long after the great flood, when God made the rainbow shine forth as a sign of the covenant. Twenty-one centuries from the time the promise was given to Abraham and Sarah. Thirteen centuries after Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt, and Miriam danced in freedom. Eleven hundred years from the time of Ruth and the judges. One thousand years from the anointing of David as king. In fulfillment of the times and years and months and days discerned by the prophets. In the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the foundation of the city of Rome. The 42nd year of the reign of Octavian Augustus, while the world enjoyed a span of peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to sanctify the world by his most precious coming, being conceived by the Holy Spirit and nine months of growth in the womb of his mother, now in our own times is the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, God made flesh.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
as people exult in divine plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments of in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, authority rests on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in an angel. And there suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Salvation. 
Consider the story of Christmas in Luke chapter 2. Shepherds outside of Bethlehem are keeping watch over their sheep. Shepherds were considered the lowest of the low when it came to society. They stunk. And just like the sheep that they watched over in the field, they did not have a very appealing aroma. They were best kept outside the city. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord comes to them. The angel's greeting, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace among those whom he favors. Good news. Good news of great joy. Great joy of calm, of peace, of hope. Good news which can overcome any fear or anxiety. Great joy for all people, even shepherds. Even those considered to be like shepherds, who do not share the occupation of shepherds. Those who society considers to stink and are therefore best left outside. I mean, you just can't find everything. Great joy of a Savior. One who rescues others from great danger and great harm. One who brings about justice. One who corrects wrongdoing. One who brings life and makes life worth living. Great joy of Messiah. Messiah is the Hebrew word for Christ. Both Christ and Messiah mean the same thing. The anointed one of God. The Messiah is whom God has designated to be Savior. The story of Christmas from Luke chapter 2 announces that the one whom God has promised to be Savior for all people has come. Christmas is the revelation and the realization of that promise. What God promised to take place years, decades, centuries ago in Christmas has come to pass. Christmas is not what we make it. It is not making the best of what we have. It is embracing all of the best that God has to offer. It is the celebration of God in our midst. To see Christmas as we are meant to see it is to embrace it, to be all about a person, and not our feelings, not things, not our abilities. The carols that we sing, although we love to sing them, are birthday songs. The lights and ornaments, the tree itself, are all reminders of God's love for us. The lights on the tree, that He is the light of the world, and asks us to walk in that light. The ornaments, Christmas, Christian monograms for Christ, but others as well, whether they picture our occupation or something that we have made are hung on the tree and therefore sanctified by that tree, sanctified in Christ as to how our lives are sanctified in Christ. Red bows, a reminder of the blood spilled for us on the cross. The tree itself, ever living, ever green, as is God's love. And finally, the gifts. The gifts spread the spur of the tree, 
the gifts that we give one another, recalling how in Jesus we have God's gifts of forgiveness and life eternal. We don't have to run around looking for the perfect Christmas gift, one that will set the mood, because we already have it. Jesus, the Christ, God's Messiah shared with us in love that we might learn to share in love and be in love for others. Christmas is not what we make it far from it. It's about what God has given us in us embracing it and celebrating it. Christmas tells us to be merry, to be happy, to celebrate, to receive and give gifts in celebration of the greatest gift ever given, Jesus Christ. Christmas is the good news that the Savior has come. Christmas is what God makes it.
We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God, good news of great joy for all people, we offer our prayers for ourselves our neighbors, and all the world God loves. Glory to you, O God, for the song of the angels proclaiming to the world Christ's holy birth. Give your church a joyful song to sing, that we bring the good news of peace and salvation to all people. Hear us, O God. Glory to you, O God, for the stars that shine in the depth of the night. Provoke awe in our hearts at the expansive mystery of the cosmos. Open us to find beauty in the drear darkness of night and in the first glimmers of the dawn. Hear us, O God. Glory to you, O God, for the child born to us who establishes a kingdom of justice and righteousness. Bring bonds of oppression. Bring reconciliation to warring lands, especially Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza. Establish peace from this time onward and forevermore. Hear us, O God. Glory to you, O God, for Mary's love and care. Lead us to tend to one another in time of need. Share the comfort of your presence with all people tonight who are alone or separated from loved ones due to estrangement, incarceration, or illness, especially Liz, Grace, Diane, Vanessa, Gary, Charles, Jerry, Patricia, Richard, Ashton, Lucille, April, Gary, Elsie, Virginia, Susan, Bunny, Judy, Deb, Ezra, Sheila, Kevin, Kathy, Micah, Linda, Mike, Richard, Evelyn, Walt, Kristen, Yvonne, and Jerry, Eileen. Merciful God. Glory to you, O God, for the faithfulness of the shepherds in their vocation. Grant rest to any who feel exhausted from their work during the season. Retail and restaurant workers, church musicians, administrative staff and clergy, organizers of charitable giving events, and service workers doing essential tasks. Hear us, O God. Glory to you, O God, for the multitude of the heavenly host. We rejoice in the zeal of all your saints who have witnessed the appearing of your grace and who 
reveal to us your salvation for all. Hear us, O God. Abide with us, O God of mercy, and receive our prayers according to your abundant grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me.
Send us out in service to this world that you love, telling the amazing news of your coming to be Savior and Lord of all. Amen. Arise and shine, you people of God, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and a thick darkness the people. But the Lord will rise above you, and God's glory will be seen through you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising.
Let us pray. All powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light to our world has brightened the weary hearts for peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation has filled us with grace and truth, give you peace this Christmas and always. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.